everybody. Thanks for coming over and, and uh, listening to a customer story, actually. Um, we are a mixing solutions company. Um, we build mixers that are like a KitchenAid, but the size of your car. Um, we mix the chocolate at Hershey for the kisses and uh, paints for Sherman Williams, those kind of things. Big, big mixers. So I walked into this company about two years ago, and they were a mess. And, and they knew they were a mess, admittedly, and they were trying to recruit an IT director. And I was very looking forward to the challenge to really redo the environment. They, they were trying to virtualize. They had no idea what they were doing. I had at least done it in a couple other companies. So I was able to come in and take a look at the environment. A um, couple things I knew right off the bat, right? Number one, we needed to virtualize most of the production servers. Number two, I needed something for a small company. Now, we are only about a $50 million business. We have two sites, one in the US, one in the UK. I had to do VDI, right? And I didn't want to do anything that was complex. I couldn't afford it. Right? I have one network administrator, me, and a help desk guy and a developer, right? I mean, that's it. So this had to be simple. It had to be easy to learn, and it had to be easy to maintain. So we looked at a lot of different vendors. We looked at EMC, obviously, you know, coming from a, a virtualization shops and other places. I was very familiar with them, had used them in several other places. Um, NetApp, we looked at IBM. Uh, some other like hybrid storage. We looked at Nutanix. One of the big reasons that, that we looked at NextGen a little harder was because I actually had a local rep. You know, I had a local VAR that could help me do this, right? Which, being in a small environment, that was gigantic to me. I needed somebody that could help me through this. So, and it was actually kind of like, <laughs> um, hey, uh, I'm going to do this as a, a favor to the VAR that, that helps me with my networking stuff. And at the end, my folks were like, Linda, man, you really need to take a look at this because we really think this could be what, what can do this for us, particularly moving forward with the VDI, right? Because I needed something um, that could take the IOPS and the boot storms as we would get larger. Um, we are a very heavily engineering shop, so I had to be able to do something with the NVIDIA grid cards. I had to do 3D modeling, all that kind of good stuff in my environment, right? And that has large files, lots of large files, pictures, all that stuff that I had to deal with. So we did go down the road. Um, I did site visits, customer visits, everything before we picked NextGen. And it, it went in beautifully. And then the world collapsed, like literally. We had a sinkhole in our building. Well, not in the building, but right outside. A water main break caused a 50 foot wide sinkhole that was 40 feet deep. And our transformers for our electric were right on the edge. <laughs> I was without power and on generator for two months, which was very difficult, right? Dirty power, it was just, it was awful. Problem is I didn't have all of my environment up yet. Now everybody says once you go through something like that, you never have to worry about a budget for DR. Yeah, I still do, but you know, it's, it's a little easier. It's a little easier. So anyway, I wanted to draw up here uh, kind of what I built at Philadelphia Mixer so you can see what we're doing here. Um, in production, uh, for core switching, I wanted a 10 gig backbone. We were already doing some iSCSI. I wanted to keep it that way. It's just simple and easy and you know that, that's the name of the game for me right now. Simple, easy, and cheap, right? It's lucky if you get all three. So we have Cisco 4500X as my core backbone. I know that seems small. A lot of people use them as distribution switches, but it works just great. And it gives me my 10 gig backbone with my iSCSI. I have three production ESX servers uh, that are in that. Uh, iSCSI then connected through the core to the next gen SAN. And I have two VDI servers that are connected through that to the next gen SAN as well. So we got all that up and running, and that was great, but now I really needed a DR plan, right? <laughs> God forbid the sinkhole ever happens again. So we did get a DR site, um, stood up in a co-location. Again, I tried to mirror the environment as much as humanly possible. Another Cisco 4500X, an identical next-gen M5 SAN. And we were using about, we started with about 18 terabyte, I think, and now we're up to about 25 terabyte usable. Um, 
ESX servers on that end with VDI. ESX servers are Cisco UCS. Um, the ones for VDI have the NVIDIA grid card in them. Um, we're still putting people over to VDI. I have about maybe 10 or 15 people live at this point. Um, but once we get design engineering over, it'll be you know, much more like 40, 50 out of 150 people, you know, and hopefully we'll get our sister company in the UK to adopt it a little bit better and we'll have, you know, closer to 100 people on it. So we have that connected right now with a 50 meg um, circuit and I'm replicating today with Veeam. I'm doing my backups with Beam. I'm, I'm replicating with the Veeam, right? being able to do the snapshots, and it's working great. Now, we are having, there are two applications I don't have virtualized yet. One is Exchange, and, and yeah, unfortunately, that was mostly because when I told you the environment was bad, I wasn't lying. Like, I had to take one of the ESX boxes because we weren't fully virtualized yet and make it an Exchange box just to keep it from crashing. So I'm now finally getting the Exchange box um, virtualized and in the uh, virtual environment, thank God. And then the only other application I have is our ERP system, right? Uh, finally got that certified to be on VMware and we are virtualizing that and should be going live by the end of the year. But in the meantime, I do have Exchange and the ERP system on raw data mappings to the next gen SAN. And we are using next gen's replication to replicate that down to DR. One thing I can tell you about, and this was really, actually really important. Glad I took a second. Um, one of the things that I really loved about this was being able to do quality of service, right? So not only was this, and the management console is silly easy, like silly easy, uh, which I love because my network administrator also has to be my storage administrator, and she needs to be able to do this quickly and easily. But the beautiful thing is I could do quality of service for the flash. So say my tier one is SQL and soon will be exchange, right? And what that means is it's going to get the highest priority for reads, which means it'll stay in flash, much more likely to stay in flash as long as it's being read, at least those blocks, right? And then tier two, I have most of my other like file and print apps, um, not to beat on accounting people, but accounting apps, you know, things of that nature, um, and my VDI is tier two. And then tier three, at least in my environment, is dev and test. Right. So it, it really helps me prioritize the stuff, even though the developers keep saying, you know, I need the server with 50 procs and, and it's got to be the fastest thing since sliced bread. Yeah, we, we put them down in tier three and they have no idea. They've, they've never noticed the difference. So that, that was another very compelling reason for us to go with NextGen, um, was really being able to prioritize my uh, data needs and the ease of the, the console, uh, which is just terrific.